Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel S2T. In today's show, Camera Tuesday, we're gonna talk about three CMOS slash CCD cameras, basically multi-sensor camera. So let's dive right into it. Now, before we understand why the heck we have to use multiple sensors, we have to understand the core fundamental reality of our sensor world. It's black and white, AKA monochromatic. Basically, every camera sensor can only tell you one thing. It's luminance, basically how bright something is. Basically, this is bright, this is dark, uh, you know, this is mid and all that. So that's all it does. It's monochromatic. Basically, all it can tell you is like, you know, uh, basically black and white image. So what do we do to get color out of it? Do we do magic? in a short way yes what we do is basically put a color filter on that so that way we get three monochromatic channels now in those three monochromatic channels we have already uh, specified we have filters on that so using that knowledge that these are the filter we have red we have green we have blue so these three black and white image aka monochromatic image uh, goes to your computer computer combines it and gives you uh, your true life color images basically so that's what is happening this is one thing you have to understand it is common with every camera like barring some experimental cameras and some uh, shark cameras and, or some sigma camera also track that uh, barring those uh, extreme events almost all of them uh, every camera from red to iphone to sony to panasonic to every tom dick and harry generally utilize the same principle they have a black and white sensor on top of that they put color filter uh, that color filter is like you know mapped it's like okay this pixel is green this pixel is red this pixel is blue that is mapped and all these three data is separated you and then you get three separate monochromatic information which your computer combines or the processor in your mobile phone or the processor in the camera does that so that's what's happening this is very critical you have to know we have only have black and white image we don't have color images and those people who are dealing with astrophotography they, they are very familiar with this they buy black and white camera they have color wheel so they, that way they can get absolute accuracy because if you go to nasa and be like i'm gonna use this filter for uh, scientific measurement they'll say that's the door disappear so what's the problem with this? Like, again, you have seen images out of you have taken photos of this, uh, the video cameras are made out, movie cameras are made out of this. So what's the problem? Well, the first problem is resolution. Mathematically, it does not have the resolution. So whichever resolution you take, let's say you take 30 megapixels. It's like, okay, 30 megapixel, go. So the moment you divide it by like red, green, blue, you will have uh, basically 20 megapixel green, you will have five megapixel red, five megapixel blue, like what? Yeah, people originally wanted to have like one to one ratio, but it turned out human eye is tuned to green. So in experimentation, turns out green gives us the most, uh, you know, quote unquote, natural feeling images. So we created this bare pattern. Now this bare pattern has like one uh, red pixel, awesome. Then you have one green pixel, okay. Then you have one blue pixel, okay. And then you have one green pixel. So basically this four pixel creates a quadrant. Each quadrant has like twice the number of uh, green and half the number of red and blue. Now that gives a problem that's like, mathematically you are missing the information there is no information what the hell is supposed to be in the green pixel in red channel like okay green pixel got give you the green data awesome no problem what is supposed to be in the red like there is no pixel in real world real world has like you know whole spectrum of it so what the hell was happening there you have no idea so what we do is because of like first you mathematically halved it then you have to de alias that basically you create uh, get that um, separated channels then you have to mathematically fill that up so it's an algorithm uh, and that's why you hear people say color science this is what color science are representing it's like you take the red data how the heck it's color prompts like you know missing spaces how the heck there's supposed to be something and this is why computers are having such a hard time like you know giving the true 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 color images and that's why people uh, represent you know negative had that original colors that's why because it's math negative had the crystals that are actually reacting here's there is nothing it's like mathematically the algorithms are trying to put something there like you're okay if green is this value it's supposed to be this value red is like this like you know there is a full-fledged algorithm going on so this the mosaic process it's very very computer intensive and people who are like you know take the raw footage from a camera and all that jazz and they have to process it properly to get that like you know true color or the color they want it's very tedious because of this to get that information now okay let's say it works again you are using your iphone camera you are using your samsung camera or you are using your sony camera it works it's a known time tested technology so what's the problem then resolution one thing another aspect is uh, that processing required becomes a headache once you go into higher resolution it's like full HD, again full hd now is okay but in back in the like you know 2000s when full hd was like being thought of is like whoa that's not happening in 2010 like full hd was like whoa miracle thing 
so because of de-aliasing de process that's a very tedious thing like your processor becomes like a computer grade processor to handle that then we have high noise now why the heck we have noise because we are mathematically utilizing to fill in the gaps so side effect happens whenever you're seeing more more filters that happens because of that it's like computer is trying to fill in but it does not have actual data so it's like it tries to fill in and algorithm starts to like starts to happen and that's why you will always see like you know this rainbow effect in the fine details that's happening because of that the algorithm is trying to feed in the data where it's none so the accuracy and noise goes high like it's really really bad so that's why the moment you say scientific instrument and you use bare filter they like disappear so that's the problem with that okay problem is a problem do we have a solution thankfully yes we have uh, diacropic prisms or uh, basically these prisms are used in multiple places camera and projectors because once a uh, projector became a big and big and big and deal and more digital dlp projectors as that the problem was how the heck you give uh, rgb information the problem was like you know earlier they used color uh, wheel that was not that good so people said like okay just have three independent uh, systems and then combine that to combine that we used to utilize diacritic prism or beam splitter so to say this is common mathematical things and benefit of that because of the prism it has very independent color separation it's like green is green only blue is blue only and and uh, red is red only and when you take that color uh, separation compared to separation of the bare filter bare filter has way too much overlap so what does that mean that simply means if i give you 5 megapixel bare sensor uh, like with bare filter and all that jazz versus a 2 megapixel uh, prism based system 2 megapixel will give you higher precision basically you like if you take photograph of let's say woolen clothes with different color threads you can like oh dude this is a high megapixel flat out and that is why like for scientific instrument this is necessary and even for uh, like you know self driving camera or broadcast industry this like literally gives you three independent so basically there is no processing going on there is no mathematically yes there is no like okay there is a bleed over no prism will separate it based on physics itself so you you get absolute colors out of it absolute so accuracy goes up your resolution goes up because you don't have like okay 10 megapixel is for this 5 megapixel is for this 5 megapixel is for that no you get 10 10 10 so you get true 10 megapixel true 10 megapixel so that's why like uh, you will have the prism assembly and three sensor assembly and it reduces your computational requirement now computational requirement is not a big deal if you are like okay i'm going to take a clip and i'm going to render it or like you know it the camera only has to work for few minutes it's a completely different thing if you have a camera equipment let's say in bbc news at water where it's supposed to work 24 into 7 into 365 like literally there will be a backup camera but again those will only be used if something breaks so in those sort of area reducing the computational requirement is absolutely necessary so computation that also allows you to go to higher frame rate and higher resolutions because you are reducing the computational aspect so what does that mean in real world in real world you have to understand that our broadcasting industry from day one when it went to color industry that's how they did it like from the early days i'm talking very early days basically there was no digital sensor there was analog uh, video cameras basically they had um, invert of crt basically they had three of them like that's how it began so from day one this was the reality like you supposed to have three sensors for rgb this bare uh, bare filter technology is very new so for our broadcast industry from day one they expected to have like rgb and because they started that and once they started to digitize in around uh, uh, 2010s and all that that flat out every camera company directly went into that it's like they did not even try to get bare filter it's like you do it's a broadcast camera it's supposed to have three sensors flat out the benefit of that they directly got 444 output and if you are familiar with like you know compression and all that jazz you know all the camera does is like 422 420 that's not acceptable if, especially if you are taking like a sports photography where people have fast motion i told you like all those compression requires computational processing if you want to broadcast that like directly i'm capturing it and giving you live you cannot afford that luxury so and this was a like you know known absolute thing is like unless you have some uh, like you know run and gun scenario or like you know backup camera most of the primary de dedicated broadcast camera must have three sensors it's like it's almost a given they will not even advertise it it's like you buying it it's supposed to have it it's in broadcast industry so even for a small handy cam that is for specifically built for news gathering let's say if you buy from jvc sony or panasonic flat out all of them will have three sensors like even sony has that type in sony professional type 3 cmos you will get like their whole lineup it has like a 15 16 cameras so 
this is a very uh, absolute thing it's not uh, common for consumer electronics but this is absolute for professional broadcasting industry now then we talk to 2020 olympics now this is a big very big deal there is a very good chance it might be cancelled but in uh, 2020 olympics they want to do something different they want to broadcast it 8k because we did record a uh, rio olympic in 8k but we did not broadcast it this time it's supposed to be broadcast in japan at 8k now how the heck you going to do 8k because 8k literally translate to 33 megapixel now imagine processing 33 megapixel that's a very tedious task even at like uh, let's say 22 megapixel green and uh, 55 megapixel uh, red child that's like a lot of computation and you are talking about fast moving objects yeah that that it can be done again for red cameras do that but they can only do that at 30 frame per second best case scenario so this puppy puppy supposed to do that at 240 frame per second like whoa, whoa, whoa. broadcasting standard is set to 60 frame per second why the heck a broadcast camera is supposed to do at 240 or 120 the reason for that this will broadcast it like it will it has no way of recording it this will flat out broadcast it it will go to a server that server will act as a quote and quote cache and whenever you have to do replay they can slow down the replay and then show the public that's the whole point so this whole pipeline is working on that and it is necessary because they cannot have computational overload is like yeah computers uh, you know relax computers trying to process uh, what the hell in the red channel what the hell in the green channel that cannot happen that flat out cannot happen and not to mention when you are talking about 8k most people can't tell the difference between 4k and 8k now to truly push 8k and be like okay i'm actually getting 8k you have to have the information to show like the display can show it but if your camera is not capturing and you're using algorithms sorry it does not have that quote and quote true feeling to that so having three sensor really gives them that true feeling and that's why the broadcast is specifically tuned for rgb uncompressed is like you know r and g and b they will all be equal depending on uh, like infrastructure whether it be over internet over fiber or whatever have you but the three channels will not no longer be like okay just compress one so that is uh, the next thing that they want to do broadcast camera 8k at around 120 frame per second to 240 frame per second so that's why you have rgb in fibers they are like dude this bandwidth is too high for hdmi and all that just just, just use fiber just just let go and use fiber so this is the real world like even though you are not familiar with this technology or very very rarely like you have actually hold it one of your in hand it is like you know backbone of our in broadcasting industry and in sports also especially in cricket also because i'm uh, while i'm not a big fan but i do watch cricket so once in a while and i can easily see like you know what oh, that ball was like you know quite a they slow down how the heck they are slowing down because the camera broadcasting camera is working at much higher rate and it is working continuously let that sink in it is working continuously so every th- footage that they are recording is recorded at 140 depending on the server like if the server is low in space it might record in the same frame rate but it might reduce the resolution so it's like you know 4k if they have to do through the cache you get 4k if they have to you know go back to the uh, recorded medium it will be full hd but again the frame rate would be maintained because like in sports speed matters So this was my uh, presentation on three sensor cameras. I hope you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it among your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I'd urge you to press this like, press it twice to show me extra disappointment, and please leave a comment because I try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free, and as always, thanks for watching.